Okay, great. Okay, well, um, thanks very much for having me today. Um, so, pretty much what I want to talk about is um, modeling for data warehouses, and in particular, looking at a particular modeling technique. Um, so, modeling for data warehouses is not a simple thing. You know, it's an incredibly complex, uh, incredibly complex set of requirements, and it often catches people up. And part of that is because um, requirements aren't always there, and also people rush ahead to trying to build out model in a database, so actually trying to build out tables and dimensions and facts, and they get very much caught up. So um, what I want to talk about is sun modeling, um, which is essentially a process to try and um, ease that. Um, and it's so simple, hopefully we can talk about it in um, pretty much just 10 minutes. So as I was saying, Sorry, um, could, you, yes. could you just slow down a bit, your audio is dropping out a little. Oh, apologies. Um, yep, yeah, so, so the modeling Thanks. process essentially, is that okay now? Um, yep, maybe. Okay, so yep, so the modeling process um, that we're essentially looking at, so uh, data warehousing is, modeling for a data warehouse is, is not a simple task, it's very complicated, there's an awful lot that goes into it, user requirements, um, etc. And typically what happens is people rush ahead to try and build out a physical model, so building out um, the model actually in a database um, and the requirements get lost. Um, so what we generally have is a user model, so how users think about the data, how they already analyze it in some shape or form. Typically when you start a warehouse project, it's not because a business doesn't have any analytical capabilities, it's just that they've been doing it one way, typically in Excel, and they're hitting problems. So they'll ask for somebody to build them a warehouse. So users already know about their data, and they are very knowledgeable about what they actually want, um, but the physical model maybe uh, can get a little bit um, out of sync. So we typically have our users, and our users have incredibly deep business knowledge. They know an awful lot about um, what are their businesses and what they want out of their analytical system. They're generally always quite good communicators. Not always, hopefully they generally are. But the problem is they're generally not very technical. And then on the other side, we have our developers who then probably have very little business knowledge potentially about the key operational. They know what it is that they do, but maybe not what the whole business does. And sometimes, you know, developers, we can be a little bit weak at communicating. Um, but on the plus side, we are incredibly technical. So we know what um, we know how to build what we're trying to build, um, but possibly not what an actual user wants to be built. Um, so typically what happens is an awful lot of going back and forth really because uh, we think, developers think they maybe understand the um, requirements of a user, but might not actually be understanding what they think they are. So um, back in the late 80s, there was a group called the ANSI Spark Committee who started actually seeing this problem, not particularly about data warehouses, but about development in general, that there was a disconnect between the developers and the users. Um, so they came along and they essentially invented the business analyst, uh, much to their sins, as we all love business analysts. Um, and essentially, what they noticed was that they needed somebody who would sit in between the users and in between the developers who could talk user talk, but also be um, more technical, so they'd be a nice go-between. And I mean, in not all projects is there an actual dedicated BA. Sometimes, you know, that is actually played by the developer, somebody who is maybe more experienced in the business or more experienced in requirement gathering. Um, so what they essentially came up with um, is the term a logical model. So we have our user model, their requirements, our physical model, how it's going to be implemented. And then sandwiched in between those two um, is a logical model. So how actually uh, it's going to be uh, a, a representation of how that's going to be modeled, something that users understand, but something that can be um, nicely changed into an actual model. Um, and so to kick us off, we're just going to quickly talk about um, how users generally view their requirements. So when I talk to a customer, what I generally find is customers um, are very good at um, talking about what it is they want. So they'll say maybe, um, oh, you know, so we analyze the amount of sales by time. And that statement is open, it's very ambiguous. And so actually asking somebody to say, oh, okay, when you say sales by time, can you just draw that for me? And users generally think in charts, grids, and reports. So that's all stuff that they're used to. But the 
quite easy to get a user to actually start drawing something like that. Once you start drawing these things out, um, from a data warehousing point of view, a few things become very, um, very transparent. So what do they all have in common? I mean, the key things that they have in common are dimensions and measures. So the two fundamental areas, or two of the main fundamental areas um, involved in building a data warehouse. So if we go over these quickly, um, a dimension, um, so typically our textual values, something which describes our data, it adds context to our data. These are typically dates, customers, employees, products. If this was in Excel, it may be something that you'd pull in as a slicer, how you're actually slicing your data down. Um, and generally, these dimensions have many attributes. So a customer, we might be interested in their age, their sex, their name, their address, all these sorts of um, attributes that further describe um, what our customer is. Dimensions, they typically contain our hierarchies. Um, they um, have um, various different hierarchies, so date hierarchies, parent-child hierarchies, um, our products, and that sort of thing. Um, then we have our measurements, so what we're actually looking to measure, what is it that we're trying to slice down using our dimensions? These are typically numeric, something we're looking to aggregate, some min, max, um, or our key performance indicators. So if we take a look at a chart, um, so this is something how our users are thinking, this is possibly something they've drawn, we can start to have a look at, okay, well, what's a dimension and what's a measure? And what we can see is we know that measures are numeric, so um, typically we may be looking at um, what's down on our left, and we know our dimensions are typically textual and they um, slice and dice our data. So you can see that um, our impact is typically going to be our measure here, our dimensions are um, our dates, and also our potentially our media type, our followers, our aggregates and donors. And we can apply the same process to this um, particular grid of data. What we can see from this grid of data is that we have four dimensions um, and we have two measures the cost in the middle of those two measures being an attribute of our item. So our pencils, they have a cost. Our binders have a cost. Um, and from this sort of analysis, what we can actually start doing, um, oh, before I skip ahead, the other main thing that we need to think about as well is the grain of our data. So looking at here, we need to work out at what grain our data is. So um, generally, you can think of this almost as a combination of all of our dimensions, everything that describes not always. And this one is probably a good example because our grain is of the date, region, rep, and item. Cost is an attribute, it's not a dimension, so it doesn't, it doesn't alter our grain. If our cost was different, it may do, but for this it doesn't. Um, yeah, so we now have our user, our logical and our physical model, and what we'll do is we'll focus on our logical model. So some modeling, um, the process that we'll quickly look at, was developed by Professor Mark Whitehorn. Um, from Dundee University. Um, you can find us a couple of links there. His consultancy company, Penguin Soft, and then also about the Dundee course. Um, some modeling was designed to simplify the modeling process and hopefully to empower our users to understand their data and its analytical potential. Um, so, what is a sum model? Essentially, this is a sum model. It's a, um, a logical representation of what will essentially become our physical model. And what we'll do just quickly is just go through using this example and try and build it out into this. So um, we know that we've got four dimensions and we have um, two measures that we're going to try and build. So just to quickly um, go through a sample model, um, we'll kick off with a circle in the middle. This will essentially eventually contain our measures. So what we're trying to calculate, what we're trying to sum, average, min, max, anything we're trying to do, how we're going to slice and dice these numbers. So adding our order date to start with, we add a spoke from the middle circle, um, and we add on our date. So um, this essentially is enough to capture the requirements from this particular model. Um, but as business intelligence developers, we know that somebody's probably going to want to do a lot more analysis than just at the date level. So we can start adding this out. We can add in a hierarchy of we know that they may analyze by the date, but they probably want to know sales by month, quarter, year, and even by week. And then we might also know that the business probably has um, additional hierarchies. They may have a calendar year, a business year, a contract year, um, and many other different types of year. We can add those on. Same for our um, region. Uh, region is just a static value of um, the region that our sales were done in. So this is enough just to capture that. We can add on another spoke 
is a, another representation of our region. Uh, moving through, we have our um, rep, our employee, essentially. Um, adding on another spoke, we can add on the information about our employee. And again, as business intelligence developers, our users might not know their full requirements, but we can tease out. So we can say, okay, you're analyzing by employee, and typically that's the employee name. Are you also interested in the sex of the employee? Is that my 10 minutes? Sorry, you carry on, Terry, sorry. Okay, I'm all done. Um, so yeah, we add on additional, um, additional attributes about our employee. Then also we can add on our item. And we have, again, the cost and name type. So we're working out what our additional requirements are. Then our final step is to look at our measures and to add our measures on. So the amount of units and the total price. And they just sit in the middle of our circle. And essentially that's a completed sun model. Um, each spoke representing a type of um, dimension with the center being our measures. And what we can do, what this enables us to do is to, um, users can understand this and they can quickly see, okay, so based on this, I can analyze units sold by item by the month that it was sold in and by the region. And they can start seeing that you essentially get almost a Cartesian join of potential opportunities for, um, for analysis. And they can understand that our users empower our users to understand dimensions and measures and attributes and start thinking in these ways. So when it comes to our presentation there, it makes things very easy for them to understand. And then from this, it's very easy to translate that into a physical model. So um, actually designing a star schema for a data warehouse. Um, and then from that, it's a crudely drawn um, diagram. But essentially what we can do is we will end up building up many sun models that represent our requirements in the business. Um, and we can work out our top line is um, our difficulty to build, so on a 1 to 10 scale, and the bottom line is a importance to the business. So we can see our first model contains um, some amount of measures and a couple of dimensions. It's hard to build and has a low business impact. Whereas our third one is simple to build and has a high business impact, so we can start focusing on that particular sun model. And then by building that sun model, and uh, we will build additional dimensions, which will typically be involved in our other ones, which will reduce the difficulty to build, um, and then we'll start being able to prioritize our um, warehouse build. OK, and can we wrap it up there, Terry? Oh, yeah. great. No, nice. Sorry. And um, yes, that's it.